I want to take you back to the first Canal Cup that I caught. The hunger and the adventure. Wanting to find out what I could unlock within these waters. These fish, these carp, they're unique. And the fact their environment and their appearance. But that's what all makes it worth it in the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie up a hinge quickly, about two hinges. There's a lot of leaf debris out there. And so I want to be presented over the top of it. I'm just going to fish singles. Just a little blob on the thing like that. It's quite a decent sized hinge, but that's how I like to fish them. And you can manipulate chod section so it has a really nice bend in it a bit like that so it's like ready to attack sort of thing Hopefully you can see that, it's the harvest moon, full moon. It's quite uh, yellowy orange, it's not bright white. But I'm um, hoping this brings a few carp tonight. If it does, then you'll definitely see. And unfortunately I'll have to run back to the van, but yeah, fingers crossed. In this clip there's actually no audio of this fish because I didn't have the mic on um, I was rushing for work it was about half six in the morning I had to be back for seven so it was quite a rush but yeah this little battered thing come along didn't weigh it or anything but the video is a bit off as well because the light was shining in my eyes I was trying to look at the camera but yeah I was happy with my first fish and stuff like that just i love the startless sort of the adventure and no other anglers it reminds me of france being on the canal just i like it a lot to be fair the only thing i don't like is people poking their head in your bivy and things like that um and i think that's just your personal space but i suppose they're not anglers so they wouldn't know that but yeah just like chilling out on a canal, same as being on a wild pit or somewhere, just no other anglers, it's really nice, you know.
So here we are, back at the canal. You've just seen me have one. Um, little common, it's a proper little cool thing. All scarred and bruised and that. But yeah, I do have to apologise for the quality. It was raining, it was about six in the morning, it was pitch black, and I had to get to work in the next 15 minutes. So I was in a rush and you see me trying to position it, but it is what it is, we caught one. We're back. Um, I put five kilos out with the throwing stick on Thursday, it's now Saturday, over to the snags and I put a bit of salt on my on the tree out there. So I'm going to put two rods towards the snag, one on the tree, three hinges, again, there. Uh, you've seen that already in the way that I curve it, I think most people curve it now, um, rather than doing like the bolt upright hinge, I think the hooking capability is way better. But um, yeah, you won't see much rig stuff from me, you never do really. I just like to put a tiny bit in there because I think a lot of videos are way too, oh look at this rig, look at that rig, when really it's down to the, to the angler, not the rig as such. So I'm just gonna put the baits on these and fling them out. So I'm back at the canal and had the rods out about an hour, had something to eat, sandwich, packet of crisps. I've gone with quick food for some reason, I just had an instinct to get pot noodle and some porridge and that. But Back on the pre-baited areas, 20 baits over each rod, so 60 baits out overall. One to there, one to the edge of the weed just here where that shack with the reflection starts and then one just over here on the reed line where the tree is um, I'm gonna I think my plan with the canal is to almost try and complete each pound in each section and move on to the next one to put time in and move on and move on and move on and keep going down 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 until I reach where my future like target is going to be I've received a picture of a fish that is a good 30 pounder and it looks like a really proper old Italian strain it's a wicked thing um, I, I probably won't put a picture of that up just to give the angler some privacy because mm, this area would be quite hot and people would be on it if they saw it and which pound it was in so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say that. So yeah, I'm here for the weekend. That's the plan, and I think I'm gonna recast the rods tomorrow midday, um, just to freshen them up. I think new hook baits, although the plum ones they do, they stink even after a week. Um, but yeah, I'll, uh, I'll come in with any updates. Hopefully you see me this session. So I've been up for a while now and I didn't hear nothing last night. I went to bed about 11pm. Um, slept pretty well. Didn't hear nothing. Got up about an hour ago. Around first light. That's about 6 o'clock now. Maybe a bit later, 7. Um, we're at the back end of October. So... The clock's going to go back soon, which gives us a bit more time. But I'm just having some porridge and a coffee to get me going. And a test... I don't know if this is like a really good thing, but a testament to these cups. Because they keep the drink warm for so long. Like, it's crazy. I, I prefer it go colder so I can drink it quicker, but yeah, I'll uh, I'll check in if we get anything. I've seen a bit of bubbling, but I don't know whether that can be from other fish and that. So yeah, I, I'm just facing the water, keeping my eyes keep my eyes a bit peeled. So yeah. Oh, 
bit zoomed in there. Let's zoom that out a bit. Just have one. Common, again. Off that same spot where that tree's dangling over. Just need to resharpen the hook. Put some of this, this new stuff, this mega on it. Like, this, this isn't a sponsor or anything, but uh, Zero Rust is called. You apply it to the hook, leave it five minutes, and it will never rust, basically, ever. So you can keep reusing it and reusing it and reusing it until you catch a fish, and then until, basically until the hook point blunts over, you can reuse your sharpened hooks, which is mega. So, gonna put another pop-up on. That one was on the plum again, with the sheep dip. That stuff is like the most garlicky, pungent smell. It's like a proper here I am bait, you know. So I'm just going to sharpen this hook up with the file. Only give it a touch up because it is already sharpened. And then get the rod back out. See you with the fish. <laughs> so I've been here through the night. And it's about 10, 11 in the morning at the moment I think. Just add the bobbin pull up tight, rod tip start pulling round. Same spot again. And a lovely, stinky pop up. Oh, see if we can calm him down and I'll lift him up for the pictures. Another battered one. He's regrown some of his uh, tail back. I'll, I'll show you in a minute. But some lovely withered fins. See if you see if you behave for us. There we go. Lovely little common. Fifteen pound maybe. Got a little bit of a gut to him. Small fish, but all the bites are welcome at the moment. So upon seeing this fish twice, it's actually my first recapture already. So I've had two bites. And this is in the same fish, but to see it in better quality and better light, it's a lot better. So it's about first, well, I had a bite on first light from a small common. Really good condition. And I'm um, taking on the hinge again. Let's see if I can. Yeah, taking on the hinge. Just out, you would have spread a boy leaves like you would have seen me doing. I'll hold them up for you. Two more bites in there, I'm gone. On to the next one. I've heard there's four carp in there, and I've had two three bikes, two carp, different ones, so I will show you the other side. But that fins are so withered.
I've just put out, oh, I've just not, just put out, I've just put back a fish. Small common. I didn't weigh it on, I think, but, um, just giving the hook a bit of a touch up now. It's not like it's not blunt and it's not sharp, if you get what I mean. It's like I've had a fish on it, so I'm going to touch it back up, apply some of that treatment stuff to it, and then put it back out. Maybe five more baits over each rod. That encouraged a bite yesterday. Whether that was what done it or whether it was something else, but I'm going to put five more baits back over. Lovely hinge again. Get the sharpening kit back out. This one is it's a blatantly obvious plug, but it's the best kit you can get on the market. So, and that's not me just saying that there. I think they're imported from Swede, a uh, Swiss made. They're imported from there, and I'm right. I think I'm right in saying this is the only. The only company that has these files in the UK. But yeah, back to the topic of fish. I'm gonna sharpen this up. Only very lightly, get the sharpness back on it. All three sides. Needle sharp. So when you rest it in your finger, it just doesn't any pressure to break through that first layer of skin. I'm going to whack it back out and you've either seen it by now or I'll show you the fish. Ha! Another bite. Come about an hour or two after the one that you've just seen. And I said, what I was gonna do was put five or so more baits over each rod. And this one's gone. Real lovely looking fish. Proper long thing he is. Get some water on him. That's a bit better, isn't it? Showing you his dorsal hurt. <laughs> Wicked little fish. He's probably up near 20 pounds close. <clears throat> 18, I'd say maybe. That's not the point, is it? Wicked fish. So I just got here, got the rods out, pinged two hinges over to the bush, got to re-spool that rod. Um, I back to back grinned it because I ran out of braid and now the knot's showing. That was a few months ago so that's enough to have to re with braid. Got an Indian I can't wait to tuck into. So yeah, I'll have a little chat in a bit about tactics and that but for now I'm going to tuck into this. So you can't really see me that well, but I am here. Um, obviously, I wasn't be speaking, and that was a bit silly. But yeah, I've just got to spread a bait out like you would have seen. Um, Pop-ups, and I've got them all now. I'm concentrating on that bush because that's where all of my bites have come from. Is on that tree. Now it's still quite silty out there. I'm getting. I, Every now and again I do get a drop, 
but that seems to be very random and I couldn't hit the same spot again when I did get a drop from last time um, so both of them rods I got a drop but I mean I'm getting a soft drop a firm silt not like it's been polished or anything because the spread bait and I get them moving and they have been moving a lot and eating a lot because all of them fish I caught all of them were passing passing the plum through so that is a really good sign they're definitely on the bait that five kilos I put in last Thursday it's now Tuesday doing an overnight in case you didn't already grasp it it's a work night but um yeah last Thursday that five kilos I put in I think that's definitely gone now I put about a kilo in when I left on Sunday so I don't know what would be left of that probably not much with all the other fish in there um, I've put about 30 40 baits on the tree just around the tree in the tree and put my rods close to the tree tight up tight so I'm hoping that I get me a bite I've only had one bite through the night and I've had three free between seven in the morning and ten in the morning but i'll be gone by half six tomorrow morning so i won't be able to wait out that bite time that i think i think is the one to be fair but yeah um, i'm feeling quietly confident i'll keep that bit in even if i don't catch because it's nice and warm tonight it goes down to about nine degrees i've got a new heated blanket to try out a little usb one but I don't think I'll be needing that. Might try it out just in case, but yeah, if it's any good, then I'll let you lot know. So I don't know if I've showed you this, but seven foot flurry leaders with putty on the ends, four and a half ounce lead on a lead clip, long boom, and your hinge there. So two of them are gonna go out, one on the tree, one just off it, and I'll catch up with you in a bit. So this was the full moon night, this was my fourth overnighter this week, starting Tuesday night, and this was Friday night, so I was proper prepared, and I had a bite that blew me away, resulting in this one. God, look at that, mate, you should see his mouth. A starburst on it. Oh. I'm being a little better. Watch it, look at his top lip. It's like where he's been eating some of this very hard. Oh my. Go. Show the other side quick. What a beautiful fish. Oh, that's a cool side of that, that is. Flinging this way a bit high, turn to me. Yeah, nice. The fish is going to seem like it's been out for a long time, but did this bit of video for two minutes odd and then let it rest, moved positions and then got the fish back out for the pictures. Yeah. Right. And again. You're like hunching her. Yeah, decent. Yeah? Yeah. Back. Thank you very much. That was a sloppy Look at the kiss. Size of his So I'm just sat here at first light and I'm thinking something looks really different and then I click 
and I see two rats walking along the bank there and the water has dropped a good two foot easily now I'll show you in a minute but one of the boats is actually stuck to the floor and it's shallow as anything so I think I must have a really good chance of catching on that area now because a lot of the water is actually gone that must be a hell of a lot of volume of water to actually drop that much I don't know if some numpty's left the gate cracked and, and it's just been peeing out peeing out the end all night because when I had the fish in the sack yesterday the water was flowing and I thought that's really weird the sack was gently drifting left and that was obviously towards the gate um, and I can see the bottom I can see the bottom of the canal which you've never can normally do so hopefully it's stopped doing it now but yeah you can see the rats are rife like I've never seen a rat on the canal before but this drop in water must that's just something they really like about it so yeah I'll show you the boat that's um stuck so they're letting all the water back in now one of the water bay lifts come down on a quad bike and I had, had a chat to him told him what happened basically and then uh, he's gone and let all the water back in so hopefully all the water will be back up and they'll be swimming around a lot more rather than I bet they probably just sat in a hole somewhere probably under that bush because they know the water levels drop in but yeah well, hopefully this gets sorted before bike time it's round about now had a few bleeps so feeling lucky well, consider that the end of my journey for this pound. I'll be moving on to the next one that I've got in mind. Not necessarily the next one down, but definitely one with some carp that... Some lookers, not very many in there. But I can't wait to start fishing it and get my head stuck in to another venue.